Hello everyone, my name is Christian. Welcome back to TechPoint. Today our guest is Vlad, the co-founder at FullFunnel.io. Hello. Hey, how are you? Doing great. Thank you for joining the podcast. At first, please tell us what you do and what your company does. Yeah, so I'm a co-founder of FullFunnel.io where we work with B2B companies, B2B SaaS companies, B2B tech companies, and usually companies that have long sales cycles, so either enterprise sales or upper mid-market where there's usually multiple buyers, where also the deals are of a larger size. So because it's a different kind of sale, it's a different kind of marketing also motion that works for these kind of companies. That's where we focus, helping those companies generate demand, generate sales qualified opportunities using things like demand generation, account-based marketing, et cetera. Right. And usually who's in our target? Is there a specific uh, minimal ARR or uh, do they need to have product market fit? What's your... Oh, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> nothing kills a bad product faster than good marketing. <laughs> it's some, I heard somebody say that, but really it's very difficult to build and also to just have an ROI and build a good marketing program and have a good ROI if you don't have the product market fit, if you don't have like proven track record in the specific industry or otherwise. And our, let's say, ideal cl clients are usually above 20, 50. I think a Goldilocks zone would be between 50 to, to 300 million, although we do sometimes work with maybe between 20 and 50 million. 20 would be the kind of lower border and then also we have some corporate clients but kind of the goldilocks zone between 50 and 200 and the reason again is about it's all about ROI. Yeah. so for us to really be effective we need to have established teams right all that track record established in something that we see around you know Data. 20 plus I understand. Hey there, fellow entrepreneurs and B2B marketers. Before we dive back into the conversation, let me introduce you to a game changer in the lead generation arena, Lead Feeder. Now, we all know the struggle of identifying those elusive website visitors and turning them into valuable leads. But what if I told you there's a tool that not only promises but delivers on supercharging your lead generation and sales efforts? Enter Lead Feeder. Imagine having the power to identify companies visiting your website track their behavior in real time and seamlessly integrate it with your CRM. Lead Feeder is not just a tool, it's your secret weapon for efficient and targeted lead engagement. Now, how is Lead Feeder different? It's the ability to provide detailed insights into visitor behavior, helping your sales team prioritize efforts and close deals faster. With customizable notification, lead scoring and GDPR compliance, Lead Feeder is changing the game. Are you ready to revolutionize your approach to leads and deals? Head over to leadfeeder.com for your free demo today. That's L E A D F e e d e -R .com. Don't miss out on the future of successful lead generation with Lead Feeder. Thank you so much, Lead Feeder, for sponsoring this episode. But now let's get back to it. And usually, what's the process? How do you start? And how do you help them uh, uh, improve their uh, their processes? Yeah. So to explain this, I think it would it's interesting also to kind of explain the situation that we see. So the before mm -hmm. and after, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so people can understand whether that's relevant for them, and they can also understand if what they're doing right now, maybe it's not working, they don't know why it's not working. So I think what we see very often with companies that we work with is that there is a you know marketing motion, they're producing some content, they're running some ads, demand generation ads, uh, but actually they are not, I mean, depending on the type of company, maybe their marketing source the revenue. So the revenue that their marketing generate is, you know, a smaller percent than, for example, sales. Or what we see also sometimes is, yes, it could be like high in terms of percent uh, when it comes to the number of opportunities and deals that they generate. But uh, these deals are not as big as those that are generated by sales. So it could be like, I don't know, 70% of all the deals are generated by marketing, but actually the biggest deals that generate the most revenue don't come in uh, inbound. And so that is the kind of situation. Why doesn't it work? There are many different reasons, but like some of the fundamental mistakes or reasons why these programs are not working is too broad of a targeting, like saying, you know, who are our ideal clients? 
basically, I'd say any B2B SaaS company in North America or even worse, like any company Tech that has company. more than 5,000 employees, right? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's very often what we hear. Then, so without that understanding, it's really difficult to have a competitive advantage these days. Oh, what I also sometimes hear is like, yeah, no, 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 we have quite a unique solution. But really from the perspective of the customer, there's just so many choice. There is no reason for them to switch or to even talk to you uh, unless you're a category leader. And I, I'm, I'm assuming like a lot of the people who are listening are not category leaders in their in their market. So... <clears throat> That's why it's so important to fo to have a good focus, to really have a clear understanding of who your best customers are. Another mistake usually is that um, companies have, let's say, tr transactional mindset. What I mean is they kind of expect there is an action. I'm going to take an action and this is the return that I expect. So, for example, I'm going to run some lead gen ads or demand gen ads on LinkedIn, for example, or on mm -hmm. Google and I'm going to put whatever 20 um, in and I, I want to get 40 out, right? Yes. And the problem with B2B sales, especially when you're selling into enterprise upper mid market, when it's more complex, when it takes longer, is that it does take longer and you can't really um, expect to get this transactional sale. And another thing that happens very often in these companies, I think this this is something that I, I think a lot of the audience should recognize is that they have some sort of a cold email motion, some cold outbound uh, motion. And the as the years go by, these motions are in continuous decline, especially 2023 was a tough year. A lot of companies are realizing. And <clears throat> also this has been not only because it was a tough year economically, but also because of AI that now there's just so many emails and a lot of the emails are even personalized, but the problem is not anymore like that you have a personalized and relevant email because if the re if the re recipient, if your buyer is not even reading your email, then it doesn't matter how personalized it is. And the reason why they don't read the email is because they just received too many of, I mean, it's very simple. They received too many of them and then basically they can't read all of them. So after a while, they just start reading email from people that they already know. That's a key point. Like, do I know the sender? And anyhow, to cut the long story short, this is another typical problem that we see in B2B companies. And <clears throat> maybe just to kind of wrap up, I mean, there are many, many more, but let's, another typical one is that sales and marketing, they don't work together. So you have marketing trying to do you know, their own um, awareness and maybe lead generation. And then the only interface, quote unquote, between marketing and sales is either you have an inbound lead, okay, which is like totally normal. It goes to the sales person, but then, uh, or you're sending some sort of leads like, okay, we had this webinar. Okay, let's send them all to the sales team and let the sales team call them, which doesn't work. And then what happens is that after a while, sales and market like sales is seeing okay i'm getting these leads i don't know why are you sending them they didn't request like if they're not inbound leads like they didn't request to talk to me and so what should i do like why are you sending them there is no like context for them okay maybe they downloaded some white paper or want to, to see a webinar so what sales does is okay let me try to contact them and book a call and they, they do that doesn't happen, of course. And then after a while, they ju just start ignoring those leads. And the problem is, of course, also because sales is compensation is linked to uh, the revenue that they generate and marketing often isn't, whether it's like based on leads or other yes. KPIs. But then also sales feels like, okay, they don't have their skin in a game. You know, they're sending us these leads that I can, can't cover. I need to focus on stuff that, I, that will help me make my commission, basically, like my... Yes. So I don't disappoint my family, right? Yes. And so uh, then there is like actually no uh, collaboration. And for, for, for companies to be successful, this is essential, like to actually work together. So this is what we actually help solve these challenges. Like, and the way that we do this is help them understand who their best customers are based on actual revenue analysis, based on the actual history, not guesses. Then create a program, create 
sales and marketing programs, so where there's also shared collaboration, sales and marketing programs to drive uh, pipeline revenue. And the way that we do this is we implement a pilot uh, program usually when it's a new, and the ma majority of the companies, it's a new program that we would implement that would then, instead of just stopping everything and changing everything, we say, okay, you know what? Let us do a pilot. Let's prove it out. Everybody's yep. going to feel much more comfortable. And then we can look at how we can operationalize and scale it. That was a very long answer. No, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> No, I, I really appreciate that you, you dived into it and so many insights. But I'm curious now, how do you, uh, you're, you're only strategic, right? Not not doing any, any of the stuff. So we, yeah, it's actually a question that we very often get during our own sales calls. And there is the strategy part, but we keep it actually super lean because we, I mean, strategy is super important, right? And... Uh, but you can also spend months developing new to go to market strategy, then revamping your messaging, doing a lot of things without actually getting any feedback from the market. Mm -hmm. And what we prefer to do is to do kind of a minimal viable strategy sprint where we actually just look at um, what is, again, kind of a MVP yes. segment that we can target uh, within the pilot pilot is going to be like smaller it's not going to involve the complete team it's not going to be all the possible markets but like a very specific segment maybe even like a, a cluster which is something we can go into into later and then okay what is like a minimal program that we can like show already some traction let's say within a quarter or two let's say Obviously, like with the longer sales cycle, it will take longer to see the actual revenue. But like looking at the leading indicators, looking at other metrics, can we show that this is working? Um, and then the question is, like you said, like, okay, what well, do you do? So instead of like going to this big strategy and then only like months later, seeing that it still doesn't work and you still have to iterate, we do the quick strategy and then we implement the pilot together with the team and we do it like very hands-on. Like, so we actually like take the team by the hand. So yeah. we do teach them how to fish, but they actually, uh, I mean, just doing it together. Like, yes. So, um, that is something, I mean, it was just like speaking to a client the other day and that's what he explained to me is like, not what people expect from a consulting company, which we are. Uh, people so are in the marketing, they're used, to, they're used to either an agency yep. or a pure st strategic consulting. And we're kind of like uh, doing doing both. Yeah, I think it's the, the, the best way. <laughs> how did you, uh, how, how big is the team right now? We are we are a very small team. So we are actually two co-founders and, and one strategic consultant is working with us. One, one consultant is working with us and just a few more people that are helping us out. And this is by design. So that's how Andre and I, when we came together, uh, we don't want to grow our consulting business. We want to make sure that we are actually staying in the trenches. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we are also like, we have courses, we sell on online courses, we sell workshops and stuff like that. But basically our quote unquote scaling is then through more the training uh, part of the business uh, rather than, than consulting. Consulting is more for us to always be in the trenches, know what's going on, talk about the real challenges and you know be faced with real challenges that we have to solve so that we can talk about it and not like just be you know just a theoretical framework, etc. Yeah, I think thanks for the transparency. Um, how did you start the company? How did you come up with the idea? What's your uh, background story? How did you start in the space? Yeah, I mean, weirdly enough, I used to be a software developer turned <laughs> turned okay. actually sales. I, I, I worked first as a software developer and then I was working in a co consulting company. So it was kind of giving advice, more strategic. And then suddenly I ended up having to sell projects. And I was like always like this intellectual, um, you know, engineering type who you know, I thought like commercial selling, like that's not for me. And 
uh, I had a really good colleague who kind of mentored me and explained to me that actually to sell is to really just understand what they need, like really understand their problem, like really listen, and then kind of mirror it back to them. Okay, is this indeed the problem? I think this is why this is happening because it's like going to a doctor, right? So you go to a doctor and if you go there and they just say, you know, you should take this medicine without any diagnosis, you wouldn't believe them, right? They, he, the doctor is not selling, but like you wouldn't like take his his or her advice, right? Yes. So what you always need to do is like, do they understand my problem? And then they need to say, okay, this is why the problem happens, the diagnosis, if you're using the doctor analogy, and then uh, and then advice, right? So this is what you need, what you should be doing, right? And this is also how we can help, right? So this was kind of the framework that I always, and I still today uses. This was many, many years ago. Yes. Then I started selling like really big projects and was selling more than my colleagues in sales who were paid commission and I wasn't. So I was like, hmm, maybe, <laughs> maybe I should do this for my own, for myself. And then the full funnel itself, like after doing this for a while on my own, Andre came actually from enterprise sales, enterprise marketing world. And uh, I learned a lot from him, actually. He had this like first time experience. And um, he also worked on his own as a consultant. I worked on my own. And then back in 2020, we, we joined hands. We decided to do it together because we wanted to uh, also build a training branch, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> Great study. So four years now. Oh wow, yeah, that's true. I, <laughs> I still, I still in my mind is three years, but it is, it will be four in a September, in October, uh, in a September, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, what would be your best piece of advice for somebody that's just starting out in sales? Um, that's a very interesting question. I think that if I would just be starting in sales, and I would be in B two B, just to kind of scope this down. And let's say B2B technology or something like a lot of your listeners, probably uh, SaaS companies or founders yes. or sales. So the first thing that I would do, or maybe even before getting hired, is I would try to contact as many potential users as possible or existing customers and just try to set up a quick chat and just very simply go out and say, hey, you know, I'm, the, I'm new in this industry, um, you know, going to be working there. Uh, would you mind like just sharing with me some uh, some insights and or I mean this is like one part to start learning about the customers in the industry but the other one is like actually contacting the customers of that product and trying to understand okay why did they buy it why did they choose this product instead of a competitor's product um, who was involved in the sales process or in the buying process um, what did they need in order to make that decision? Because at the end, what I think the biggest mindset shift is, especially if you're selling into like larger companies or selling larger deals, is that it's not you who is making the sale. I mean, it's, it's not just like a metaphor or something. It's a real truth. You will always have an in, internal champion who is actually doing the sale. So somebody who wants to implement your solution is like very, very important to them. And they are willing to put their internal social capital and reputation on the line to bring you in. And they need to actually convince whatever the decision makers and other people who can influence the decision. So uh, your goal is to actually understand what's happening inside, to understand why and how they're buying so that you can basically influence that. So that would be like the first thing that I want to, right? And then obviously like the moment that I'm there, I would also be um, listening into previous maybe sale calls or just studying them, deals, what worked, what didn't work. I would probably become a friend. I would probably like very quickly or after, like, as, as soon as possible, I would try to become friends with some of the best salespeople and try to learn from them because usually they know how to sell. They might not be as open uh, about it as possible, but, you know, after a few drinks, maybe or otherwise, <laughs> you might be able to get more, uh, more insights. And I would also like, uh, maybe not immediately, but after some time and like figuring out and having some success, 
I would definitely also uh, pick like either like a regional marketing or maybe whomever is not necessarily the top marketing person. If it's a bigger company like a CMR, but and somebody is mar in marketing who has enough influence and knowledge doesn't have to be the top person. Um, and also become their friends. <laughs> I will definitely take them out for lunch or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, pay them drinks. And also just try to understand what are the activities that they have planned in, in the future and then see which of these activities I can leverage. So, I mean, to give you a concrete example, like, and it goes back to the core of what I was, what I was talking about, how should mm -hmm. actually B2B sales and marketing teams work together? And I'll yes. give you just a very concrete example from the perspective of a salesperson. So there is like, let's say they're planning a webinar, for example, or an event. Now, there is like two cases, like this event is actually relevant. So for example, ideally, you know, it's a webinar where they are bringing either an internal expert or even better, the, uh, a customer. So kind of like a case study. Wow, that would be ideal. Or it isn't. It's a, it's a marketing BS, right? Some completely relevant stuff. So then what I would what I would say if it is a relevant one, if it's not a relevant one, I would also like try to influence it by saying, you know what, if, if you're interested, what I could do, like it's an interesting topic, but what I could do is I could share some insights from my conversations with customers to help yes. you make it even more interesting and relevant and make sure that we are going to have, you know, somebody who can actually help and teach those customers something useful and that it's actually relevant for them, like I mentioned. But in either case, so let's say there is an event that is that is relevant, uh, then I would go and I would see anybody else, anybody who I am in contact with, maybe from Pipeline or just like in, in my network or people that I'm trying to get and also help with inviting people to the webinar. But I would also then work with marketing to figure out who is also already registering. And I would just reach out to them. I would say, hey, you know what? I saw you registering. Thank you very much. I... I decided to help out the expert who is speaking. I was talking to them and I said, you know what, I can like help you out and just collect what are the main questions? Like what, what is the main reason you joined this, you're, you decided to register? Are there any specific questions that you would like us to address? And just making sure this is going to be useful for you, right? And actually what you're doing is not only building a relationship with your target buyers, but you're already starting to get some insights some yes. insider information, which is a key for you to be able to sell. And then, you know, there will be the event. I would like join, it. I would be there. And I would, I, I would like, if there's anybody who I saw, who I invited previously or were in contact with previously, who is joining, I will welcome, welcome them like one-on-one. -on -one. I would be chatting with them one-on-one -on -one, and I would be asking, the, would be asking their feedback, etc. I would also like see if the marketing or whomever is presenting could run a poll or something to get more info. And then obviously like after the event, I would like follow up with everyone. So that's just one example for uh, like a webinar, but like there is other activities uh, that you could leverage uh, by joining with marketing. And suddenly, instead of you trying to contact whatever hundreds of people and then basically begging them to <laughs> just even see and read your Response. message and hopefully yep. reply to it, suddenly you're having all these different touch points, right? And you're adding value and creating a relationship and suddenly like it completely changes. And I, I can tell you that if you're doing that, um, one KPI that we like to look at will move up. And the KPI is what we call account to pipeline ratio. Essentially, out of all the target companies like that you can work with, that you're contacting, you're trying to get into, that you're prospecting if you're a sales or marketing to if you're a okay. marketing how many of them actually become a pipeline? So let's say out of 100, usually it's less than one, right? It's less than 1%. Um, so I need to contact like hundreds before I get an actual sales qualified opportunity. But when you do it in the way that I described, you know, selecting the right accounts, prioritizing, and then like doing both marketing and sales, multiple touch points, et cetera, finding the out information, not giving up too early, like nurturing them. And, and then actually you should be able to get anywhere between five to 15. We have seen okay. crazy numbers, like well, up to 80%. Well, uh, this, this was just 
just an extreme extreme case i would say but like 5 15 20 uh within enough time is not unreasonable thank you for sharing i appreciate a great answer i have one last question for you okay what is your favorite sas product to use <laughs> that's a good question you caught me a little bit off guard i mean <laughs> i mean i <laughs> Out of all the platforms, I would say LinkedIn, but it's not really a SaaS product. Uh, yeah. We use Notion a lot, but it's not also my favorite. <laughs> I feel like I'm actually with majority of the SaaS products, I'm kind of more struggling than enjoying working with them. <laughs> uh, so actually recently I discovered a very cool product. It's still at the very beginning and I think it will become better and better. It's called Fluent, Fluent.io. It's okay. for anybody who is in enterprise sales, a very interesting product to check out. It can actually help you. If you remember when I said, uh, it's not you who, who, who is selling, but it's actually your champion who is yes. selling. Well, Fluent is designed to help you um, create with that champion, basically uh, business cases and, and other communication that will help you influence the others through that uh, through that person right okay thank you so much Vlad, for joining the podcast i appreciate all the value that you shared it was uh, really great and yeah i i'm grateful yeah uh thanks for having me and uh, all the best <laughs>